Hi, I'm Thomas Flood. Welcome back to part two of my masterclass series on sustainability and the cloud for the AWS Institute. As we discussed in session one, there's a lot to do. I described a mental model called the Future Fit Framework, which describes four levels of effort or complexity to address sustainability. Level one concerns sustainable IT operations. Level two is focused on sustainable operations overall. Level three supports innovation for sustainability products, services, and business models. And level four are efforts to transform organizations to have sustainability as a new core, a nature-based economy. In this session, we will cover levels one and two. Amazon has been able to decouple business growth from CO2 emissions. That means that it's growing as a company without corresponding increases in CO2 emissions. In 2022, for the first time, Amazon reduced CO2 emissions by 0.4% while growing at 9% year on year. So let's take a look at some of the things you can do. You can decarbonize and optimize IT. For many organizations, such as manufacturing companies, the amount of CO2 emissions from IT are measured in low single digit percentiles when compared to their overall operations. For others, IT might be the lion's share of emissions. In either case, IT is a good place to start and in many ways serves as the foundation for other sustainability efforts. The fastest and most impactful way to decarbonize IT is to migrate to the cloud if you haven't already done so. In addition to other benefits like high availability, scalability, security, and cost efficiency, you can add sustainability to the beneficial impact ledger. Let's take AWS as that's where I work. 451 Research, an S&P global market intelligence company, conducted a study that found that AWS infrastructure is 3.6 times more energy efficient than the median of US enterprise data centers surveyed, and up to five times more energy efficient than the average in Europe. 451 Research also found that AWS can lower workload carbon footprints by nearly 80% compared to surveyed enterprise data centers, and up to 96% once AWS is powered with 100% renewable energy. So what does that mean in practical terms? According to the research, migrating an average one megawatt enterprise data center with 30% utilization, a company could reduce their carbon emissions by 400 to 1,000 metric tons per year. Migrating with other cloud providers has similar benefits for sustainability. I'm just not as confident on their numbers. The second thing you can and should do is to conduct the review of your IT infrastructure and system architecture and consider how the design can be improved. You need to focus on environmental impact, especially energy consumption and efficiency, since they are important levers to reduce resource usage. You'll also need to consider typical trade-offs you may have to make to reach business outcomes. How much data do you need to store and for how long? Do you need immediate access or do you need to archive data for infrequent access? What about latency and response times? Do you need millisecond latency for every use case? Probably not. Even the choice of programming language has a measurable impact on resource usage. The most energy efficient languages include C, Rust, Ada, and Java, but the least energy efficient languages include PHP, Ruby, Python, and Perl. Let's talk about level two. The majority of a company's carbon footprint is typically not generated by IT operations. There are exceptions as in media or web-based content companies. Level two is aimed at reducing the carbon footprint energy requirement and optimizing resource utilization across an organization's operation. A Coca-Cola bottling plant in Ichichek, Turkey, created the digital twin, a virtual representation of a system of the plant, modeling the bottle washing process from beginning to end. Building the digital twin took eight weeks, and the operator then simulated a variety of settings in the digital twin until they created an optimal configuration. They implemented this in the physical plant. The result? All in, the process took four months and resulted in annual energy savings of 20%, a 9% reduction in water consumption, and it saved 34 days of processing time per year. There are other things companies can do to optimize their operations, including finding and unlocking data to analyze, leveraging machine learning, implementing efficient building management systems, implementing an IoT strategy, and many more. Commonly, optimizing for environmental sustainability goes hand in hand with cost reduction. No surprise, really, since waste in any shape typically has a cost. Remember the concept of Muda, the Toyota method? It was all about reducing waste. Muda means waste and refers in management terms 
to a wide range of non-value-adding activities. Eliminating waste is one of the main principles of Toyota's just-in-time system. In early 2023, AWS open-sourced a set of modules called the Sustainability Insights Framework that allows companies to quickly stitch together a solution to ingest data from multiple sources, like your enterprise resource planning, environmental resource management, and utility data, to then conduct analysis to find optimization targets and to report on this data in standard formats that can be included in your corporate sustainability report. If you don't want to build your own solution, companies are beginning to offer commercial off-the-shelf solutions using this Sustainability Insights framework or similar solutions. Optimizing operations is not only about energy and carbon reduction. Netafim, based in Israel, is a leader in irrigation technology. Netafim delivers innovative agricultural tech solutions to millions of farmers in over 100 countries, from large smallholders to large-scale agricultural producers. The firm's guiding principle is to help farmers grow more with less. The Netafim created a product called NetBeat, using sensors and fields to collect data about crops in near real time. It sends the information to cloud-connected units that control fertilizer and watering systems. The units incorporate data from weather forecasts and Netafim's algorithms to aid plant growth. Netafim combines their expertise in precision agriculture with technology to enhance the overall impact. The result? Netafim's approach saves up to 50% water over other irrigation methods. So we've discussed ways to decarbonize IT operations and considered how companies might leverage digital transformation operations to operate more sustainably. Join me for the next session where I will demonstrate how you can support innovation for sustainability products, services, and business models.